All right, Cowboys fans, we got good news and bad news. And we'll start with the good news first. Good news is the Super Bowl is now behind us, meaning the 2020 season can be put in the history books. We can move on officially, look towards next year, and hopefully win more than, you know, four games. The bad news is that we still don't have a quarterback. And many of you may know uh, Dak Prescott actually had, or you, you may have seen the reports that he's had his second surgery now, and that's finally kind of being leaked out. Maybe, you know, whether whether that be his camp that's leaking the rumors or whether that be the Cowboys front office that's leaking the rumors. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. We'll, we'll get to, we'll get to, you know, dive into a little bit more of those details. But uh, before we get to that, just watching the game last night, the Super Bowl, uh, kind of had the epiphany, you know, I was already kind of in the camp seeing some of these mock drafts and reports of um, maybe, you know, the Cowboys eyeing an offensive tackle in the draft, whether that be uh, Panay Sewell out of Oregon or Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern at that with the 10th overall pick. And basically I was kind of, I was already kind of leaning that direction and in, in, in agreeance as well. Uh, but last night's game more or less just removed any shadow of any doubt that that is the right play and that, that it is ultimately what we should do. And the reason why is just because you see you know, the best offense in NFL history, the most efficient offense, right, that, that we've ever seen really, or one of them. You know, I'm not trying to be a prisoner of the moment here and overreact, but one of the best offenses that we've ever seen was held scoreless or, you know, didn't get in the end zone last night, didn't score a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And, you know, why is that? Well, because they, we all watched the game. We all know what happened. They couldn't block. There was no protection. Patrick Mahomes was running for his life. And, you know, not trying to be funny here, but, I mean, the dude literally had 500 yards of total offense by himself, literally running for his life behind the line of scrimmage last night. 497 yards scrambling behind the line of scrimmage. Just flush out of the pocket, running for his life. So... Just think about that. Him basically trying to avoid being sacked five times up and down the entire length of the football field. That's what happened last night. So the bottom line is the moral of that story is if you can't block, if you can't pass protect, you can't do anything up front to keep your quarterback upright, give him time for, you know, to find his targets down the field, which is what the Chiefs were obviously trying to do, which is how they beat the Bucks in the first time their first matchup in week twelve, right? If you can't block up front, then you can't do anything, okay? So Cowboys should really think about long and hard taking an offensive tackle at number 10, and we should thank them for that. We should be happy about that, and we should move forward knowing that they are doing everything that they can to protect their eventual $175 plus million dollar investment in Dak Prescott, right? Which brings me into the next topic that I referred to earlier, right? Dak Prescott's ankle. Well, we know as first reported, uh, or I guess there was some speculation from the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan, as well as the G-Bag Nation about Dak potentially having a second surgery um, on his ankle. You know, so those those rumors start being leaked and you you know you hear some of that reporting going on it's like well okay well we don't we haven't it hasn't been reported by the cowboys nobody's confirming or denying so maybe it's just an overblown story right whatever um well so basically what happened was but through doing some research listening to folks like mike fisher who is you know, well-documented as well. He's very on top of this story. And he has also reported that uh, the the issue or the, the problem, the circumstances that basically caused him to go back for his second surgery was just, they were saying a cleanup and also a repair of one of the medial ligaments in your ankle, right? I'm not obviously not a doctor, so I can't like speak too in depth about that, but, um, what Mike said is basically that this is pretty common practice, pretty normal when you're talking about a guy who's dealing and recovering from dealing with and recovering from a compound fracture of an ankle. So a lot of times those procedures when they go in, 
In this case, it was two months after the original, uh, the surgery, the repair, right? Uh, and, and basically just to kind of scope out the scar tissue, clean things out, make it, you know, get some of that mobility back, right? That's not an uncommon thing. And so, uh, you know, another thing that he said was that the doctors, once they went in for that secondary MRI, after they had removed, uh, if the, you know, once there was no longer any concern for infection, that's when they went in and went back in that, uh, and did that procedure. That's what Mike Fisher reported, right? He said that the doctors that he has spoken to or the people that are close to the situation said that they found uh, maybe something in there that was like, you know, a, a stability issue that stemmed from a previous injury. They wanted to just go in there, strengthen that extra leg of that other ligament, and then also maybe just scope it out and do some repairing, getting rid of some of that scar tissue. So nothing really too concerning to me. And, and Mike Fisher says the same thing as well. He's, you know, not overly concerned based on what he's hearing. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to address that situation and basically kind of just acknowledge, you know, a lot of times when people are talking about maybe overreacting, right, the, the public or other reporters or, you know, whoever, you have to consider that this isn't a normal human being that we're talking about. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying like Dak is some superhuman guy, which, you know, he's obviously a world-class athlete, but what we have to take into account is average Joe, you know, Joe Schmo going over there having a surgery to repair an ankle and, and, you know, maybe being less rigorous with his recovery and his rehabilitation. You can't just attribute experiences based on what's normal to the general public and, and say that that's, that's the way it should be for these world-class athletes, right? They, not only do they have access to the best sports medicine and the best doctors and the best physicians in the world, they also have access to millions and millions of dollars to spend on, on those recovery processes, right? So we can't just attribute what we know to be true from an average person in the general public having these procedures and what they go through with, with certain injuries like this and how they recover from it, right? It's not the same. These are, these are very specific, very special circumstances that we're talking about here. And so it's just foolish to go out and just assume just because you hear a report that Dak Prescott, you know, we should all of a sudden freak out because of his ankle, of, of his ankle problem. You know, like w w there's just too much, it's reckless speculation to assume that anything out of the ordinary is happening. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to, wanted to get out a little bit, just kind of point that out. And again, maybe that's just, you know, it could be just me being a, uh, an optimist by nature. That's kind of just who I am. So, you know, whatever, say, say what you will there. Um, but you know, another thing that I wanted to kind of bring light to in this situation regarding the, the whole contract situation uh, between Dak and his camp and as well as the Cowboys, obviously organization, their front office is, uh, you know, maybe, so I heard the question posed, why was this, you know, if it's not that serious, then why didn't we know about it? Why didn't they come to the forefront in December, you know, two months after his original procedure? And then why didn't they tell us that this was going down? Well, maybe that since Dak currently doesn't have a contract, right? He's not contractually obligated to tell the Cowboys anything, though that's, that's not the reality, right? But just hypothetically speaking here, you know, maybe, Dak and, and, and um, his agency are just trying to do everything that they can to leverage their situation and just make sure that there's not kind of just this mass hysteria regarding his ankle and whether or not he's gonna be back to 100% again. Okay, so maybe that's them protecting their, um, their player and their investment in, their, in that player so that they can you know, renegotiate that potential 175 million or some odd deal, right? And then on the flip side of that token, well, maybe we're hearing about it now. What is it? January, February. So two and a half months after the fact, we're hearing about that now. Maybe that's the Cowboys side. They're, you know, their side of the, of the negotiation, basically trying to leverage themselves to position and, and kind of leveraging the public saying, hey, there's a lot of concern about your ankle here. That, and, and it's just them trying to more or less secure that discount, right? The $5 million under the 40 that he was asking for last year when, you know, again, Mike Fisher reported first that that they had this 
five-year deal worth $35 million. So if you do the math, that's 175 um, in totality. And then with, you know, just, just over uh, $110 million guaranteed, fully guaranteed, right? So again, you just have to consider, there's a lot of different factors here. And I just want to caution people to just make sure that you understand the full scope, the broad spectrum view of this situation uh, before you just kind of, you know, overreact, you know, we don't want to overreact and we don't want to assume the worst just because we're seeing these reports. Okay. So that's, uh, that's really all I was getting at. And I think, I think that assuming all goes well, you know, there's two key dates that we need to be watching. So March 9th, uh, I believe it's February 23rd, which is next week or, you know, 10 days from now, whatever it is, today's the eighth. So, you know, a couple weeks from now. So there's a two week window, basically from February 23rd to March 9th, the Cowboys will have that, that span to get the, the franchise tag done. Right. So, um, assuming they do tag him again, if they can't come to an agreement on a long-term deal beforehand, before March 9th, they will tag him again the second time. And, you know, whether or not Dak signs that that's another, another discussion. Right. But, uh, from that date, March 9th, um, they would have up until April 23rd, which would be five days before this upcoming 2021 NFL draft to strike a long-term deal again. So like, it's just, so you have that window, right? From February 23rd to March 9th to get the tag done. And then from basically March 9th, all the way till April 23rd to get the contract extension done. So those are the kind of the two two key dates that you're looking at there. And then obviously, again, you know, I've said it in the past, just to kind of refresh your mind. If you're not familiar, the franchise tag that Dak played on last year, $31.4 million. It's basically a sum of the top 10 highest paid quarterbacks in the league. You divide all that up, you average, you, you know, you get the average annual salary for those 10 guys. That's what the franchise tag is worth for that position. Okay. 31.4 million this year. If you tag a player for the second time, so the second year, which would be this year, if they tag him again, that number goes up. It's a 20% increase from the contract that he played under the, the year before. So that number would become right in the $38 million range. So when you hear this, these $40 million per year rumors, and that's what Dak wants and all this stuff, basically beginning last year when there wasn't already a deal done, they knew that looking two years ahead, this is where they would be. And so that's where those rumors stem from, the 40 million per. So that's where the contract starts. The negotiation starts just because regardless of whether or not they get a long-term deal done, Dak and his camp, his agency, they know that he's playing for no less than $38 million this for the 2021 um, NFL season. So just kind of wanted to recon reconvene and refresh your minds on some of that stuff and just kind of talk about it and see what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. Uh, this is honestly my favorite time of the year as, as crazy as that sounds. I just, I love draft draft time. I love free agency. This quarterback car carousel that we're about to be in the midst of is about to be crazy. Um, you know, potentially upwards of 18 quarterbacks on the move before the, before the Jared Goff deal happened with Matthew Stafford. So really between 15 and 16 guys can be on the move this year. So makes for a lot of storylines, lots of fun and lots of, lots of study and prep time for me just to, you know, overindulge myself in that in my free time. So that's all I got, guys.